for your one alpha. We see all the best and see you in. Thank you. See you right there for your one alpha. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here's a product that I really wanted to test for quite some time now. And this is the latest version. And this is called the Kiwi SDR2. And in my opinion, it's one of the easiest fully loaded HF SDRs that I've tested so far. Now my package came with a short SMA to SMA patch cable, a USB cable for powering the SDR, a GPS antenna, and of course the Kiwi SDR2 itself. The frequency range of the Kiwi SDR2 is from 10 kilohertz right up to 30 megahertz. So that's essentially VLF up to HF. Now it comes pre-installed with OpenWebRx and it includes a built-in GPS receiver. What you'll also notice from the on-screen specs is that ADC is 14 bit, which provides a good amount of dynamic range. Now the case is made from metal with ample cooling holes to help dissipate any heat buildup. Now these are designed to be left on all the time, so they'll obviously generate some kind of heat, but it's not that excessive. Now on one end, we have a couple of USB ports, an ethernet connection, and a five volt DC input. Now, although the USB ports are not usually needed for normal operation, the ethernet port is available so that you can plug the Kiwi SDR2 into your local area network. And that's because the only method of using this SDR is via the preloaded and configured OpenWebRx, which of course you use with a browser. The other end hosts three SMA sockets. One is where the included GPS antenna connects to, which is labeled as GPS. We then have an external clock input, and then we have the RF in, where we connect our antenna. Now inside the Kiwi SDR2, you'll find a Beagle Bone Green Board, which is preloaded with Debian 11.9 and all of the SDR software. The lower board is the main Kiwi SDR2 board, and as you can see, they neatly fit together inside this purpose-built case. Now you can purchase the Kiwi SDR2 board completely on its own, and then provide your own Beagle board, even upgrading to the Beagle Bone AI64 for enhanced performance. But then of course you need to load and configure all of the software yourself. So it may be just easier to buy the Kiwi SDR2 fully built and ready to go. Now, if you have the first version Kiwi SDR and wondering what the differences are between the Kiwi SDR2, then this image here that I took from the Kiwi SDR website highlights the main differences. Now the switching power supply shield should help with eliminating RF noise caused by the switching power supply, if there is any, while the gas discharge tube should protect against any voltage power surges. The zero to 31.5 dB electronic attenuator will be super useful if you're tuned to extremely strong stations. So let's plug the Kiwi SDR2 in and first we're gonna attach the GPS antenna and then place that antenna part outside. I'll just put mine on the window ledge. We then connect the power lead without plugging it in, and then we just connect the antenna. We also need to plug an ethernet cable into that ethernet port, which then goes off to my home network. And once you've got all those things plugged in, you can then plug in that USB power cable into a USB power adapter. Now I would recommend a power adapter, which can cope with at least two amps. Now once you have everything plugged in and powered on, and assuming you have an internet connection, you can go ahead and navigate to my.kiwisdr.com, which should show something similar to this. Now this provides the local IP address of your Kiwi SDR2, along with some links. Now there's a second link there, which will take you to the admin page, so you can configure the whole host of options. You don't have to touch the admin panel if you don't want to, as it will just work out of the box. However, there are some settings that you may wish to change. As well as viewing your Kiwi SDR across your local area network using the local IP address, the inbuilt proxy allows you to access it via the internet using a URL like this. Now the number at the start of this URL will be the serial number of your Kiwi SDR. Now let's just take a quick look at the admin page. Now when you're viewing the admin page via the local network, there'll be no password required to access this. However, if you access the admin page via the internet, or via your proxy URL, 
then you'll need to enter the password which is written on the serial number sticker of your Kiwi SDR. I would, however, strongly advise to change this password as soon as possible, especially if you're planning on sharing your SDR with the world. Now, the first tab that shows is the public tab in the middle, and this allows you to enter specific information about your receiver. You can give it a name, enter a grid square, and even provide details on the type of antenna that's connected. If you do want to share this SDR receiver with the world, then the option in the middle at the top titled register on rx.kiwisdr.com will need to be turned to yes. This would then expose your receiver to the world on this website. Now all of the receivers that are listed here are online and you can click on them to view them and listen. The map link is pretty useful as well, as you can see a visual representation of where all of these internet connected Kiwi SDRs and shared Kiwi SDRs are around the world. Now just click on one of them to start controlling it and listening, all from your browser. Now other tabs on the admin page provide useful information, even information about who's connected to your STR over the network or internet. The security tab at the end is where you can set the password for the admin page, so you can just change it here. And once you're ready to start listening, set aside around 24 hours, grab some snacks, make sure you've been to the toilet, and then press the start button. You're now going to enter into a rabbit hole that will be hard to get out of because there's just so much you can do with this setup. Now on the bottom right corner of the display, you'll find the control panel where you can change frequency, mode, band, and even use some of the inbuilt data decoders. Across the top of the screen, you will see a frequency band with markers. Now if you scroll right down to the lowest frequency you can go and then start clicking on these markers, you'll get addicted to searching for signals. Now clicking on any of these markers with an associated data decoder will automatically launch that decoder and you'll be able to start to see data appear. Now this example is a Navtex decoder, which normally provides weather warnings and maritime information. So let's take a look at some of the examples that you can do with this system. Remember, this is based on OpenWebRx, so if you already have OpenWebRx already set up somewhere and you're familiar with it, then you're already going to know what it can do. However, as an out-of-the-box solution, the Kiwi SDR2 absolutely delivers. متوسطه نص العواهي اللي مو شايفتها من سنين نص ما ادري منو يعني تشوفون يعني الناس كلها فعلا كانت موجوده حلو وايد حلو بالعكس So there's just a few of the digital decoders that are available and it's not just one particular frequency that you find these modes on they are dotted all the way up and down the HF band and depending on the time of day will determine which frequencies are more active than others now this example is receiving SSTV or slow scan television, which is a popular way to transmit still images over RF on the ham radio bands. Another image decoder, or should I say fax decoder, is this one. Now this is broadcast from many places around the world at different times and different frequencies. Once you've received the full image, then it clearly shows a map which contains useful weather related information for vessels out at sea, otherwise known as HF fax. Now for those that are interested in the antenna which I'm using connected to this Kiwi SDR2, well it's an NFED half-wave antenna which uses a 49 to 1 transformer. Now I have covered this antenna on my channel before, 
and it's a very good antenna for limited size gardens. If you want to experiment yourself with this, then just head over to the website that I showed you earlier so you can try out other users' setups. But having your own Kiwi SDR set up performs better, especially if you're using it across your local area network. You also have the option to choose your own antennas and follow any upgrade paths that you want to do. Now feel free to ask any sensible questions in the comments below. And if you want to know more about this product, then take a look at the Kiwi SDR website. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video.